All right, guys, we are back for another painting tutorial, and uh, today we're painting the new Kasserkin from Kill Team Shadow Vaults. Uh, just disclosure right here at the beginning. For the longest time, I thought these guys were called Karskins, not Kasserkins. So I'm probably going to call them that at least a couple times in this video. So for that, I do apologize. Uh, but regardless, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um... Actually, before we get started, hopefully this video will have music on it. Uh, just in the background, shouldn't be too distracting. If it is too distracting, feel free to comment and tell me to get it back off the video. But uh, I think I have all my copyright claim uh, problems resolved. Uh, the ones that were claimed have been removed. Or, not the videos haven't been removed, the claims have been removed. So I'm getting my money back, which is good. Um, so yeah, we'll see going forward. I might leave it off this video just to give it a little more time and then maybe on the next one we'll put it back. But regardless, there either will be or will not be music and if there isn't, that's why. In any event, now let's for real get started. We're going to start with Mortarian Grime. Oh, I should say I primed this guy, uh, Grace here. And now we're going to start with Mortarian Grime. So, we are going to put this all over this guy, uh, focusing on the soft bits of him. Um, but if we get it on other bits, this Mortarian Grime is very soft, or very... Uh, I've lost the word. It's not a very dark, it's a light color. There you go. Not very pigment heavy. Uh, so, if it gets on some other bits, not a big deal. We'll just paint right over it. The only thing that we would like to try to avoid is the skin because that uh, that will change a little bit with this Martarian ground on it. We are going to get these little... He's got uh, some like panels on the side of his cheeks that are like part of the helmet. But we're painting them in uh, as if they were like this leather or canvas, cloth, whatever his uniform is made out of. We're painting it in the same color. So all these soft bits on here... I'm going to go over with this Mortarian Grime. And then I will let this dry. Uh, and then I'm going to do a second coat of this just to darken it up a little bit. Uh, but I don't need to do that on camera. You guys know how a second coat of this would apply, just like the first coat. So once the second coat is all dry, we'll come back and we'll do the armor. All right, we are back. And we're moving on to Creed Camo now. This is going to be for his armor. And he's got quite a bit of armor on him, actually. I'm going to start down here at the knee pads. I've got a little bit too much water on my brush. And this might require a second coat in some places. Um, so if it does, I will do that off camera. But uh, when I did it on the test model... Uh, some places were fine, and some places, like on the shoulder pads, I went back and added a second coat of this. So we'll see. We shall see. Uh, just being careful to avoid any spots that we put our Mortarian Grime on. Um, I'm also trying to avoid any belts, because they're going to be a, a brown color, and the screen will shine through that brown. Um, but anything that's metallic, we're going to paint with either black or silver. So I won't worry about getting this color on that. Just get his front armor panel here, his breastplate, I suppose. Um, and his armor goes up to there, right up to here, but then the back... Right there starts a uh, a leather strap. So I'm gonna do the shoulder pads. There we go. If the camera will focus on him, please. Thank you. Autofocus was a 
giving me some trouble. And then he's got this sort of piece that connects down here. All right. And then his armor on his wrists. And uh, his whole backpack is going to be black. So we won't worry about painting any of that. Um, I'll obviously do the other arm and the other leg, but just trying to do the at least one of everything so I can show it on camera. But we'll get his helmet here. And make sure to get underneath in there. And then I, th oh, and then we'll get his other armor panels here. I forgot about these. I think these guys wear, I think normal guardsmen wear flak armor. And these guys wear carapace armor, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, I will look into that, I'm sure, at some point. But uh, for now, I'll just say the armor, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, that'll be that. Um, obviously, I'll do the leg and the arm once I turn the camera off. Um, I probably will do a second layer on the shoulder pad just to get it nice and flat. Obviously, on flat surfaces like this, contrast can kind of leave some tide marks and bubbles and stuff. We don't want that, so I'm just going to do another coat to really flatten it out. Um, and since it's armor, that'll work just fine. I'm just going to touch up down here. Um, but yeah, once this is all nice and dry... Oh, uh, I, one thing I will say. I'm not going to do it on camera, but this Creed camo, for whatever reason, I think because it's uh, getting down, so maybe some of the, the mixture isn't great anymore, um, it dries very shiny. So I just put a layer of Lamian Medium over the top of my Creed camo. If you have a newer pot of Creed camo, you shouldn't have this problem. But if you're ever painting with a contrast paint and it's dry and kind of shiny, a quick coat of Lamian Medium or you can use contrast medium over the top of it will clean that right up. In any event, once this is all nice and dry, I'll come back and we'll do the next step. Alrighty, we are back and we've got our green nice and dry. We're going to move on to Gorgon to Fur now. This is going to be for the leather straps and stuff. So I'll start right here in the front. He's got a pouch here. Paint. Paint doesn't want to flow for some reason. There we go. And uh, his gloves are going to be black. So if we get a little bit on his gloves, it's not the end of the world. This middle bit it will be black. This strap here. These grenades will be silver. So if we get some of this on them, it's no big deal. Come around here to the side. And get this. And um, there's a lot of optional pouches and stuff in this kit. Um, as always, just for, uh, for ease of getting this video out and stuff, I've elected to attach none of the optional stuff. Um, but after I get the video filmed, I may go back and add a couple more pouches just because they look pretty cool. There we go. Other leg here. All right. And I think that's it. Oh, no. The backpack strap's up here. Right there. Just under there like that. And then I think that is everything that needs to be this color. So, I'm going to go straight into the next color is going to be Black Legion, which is not the color I just picked up. Here we go. Black Legion. And I'm going to get my brush pretty wet, uh, more wet than I would normally. This is just to thin it down just ever so slightly. And then we're going to apply this to the gun and backpack.
So hopefully, as you can see, it's more of a supplying is more of a gray than a black. Um, you could use there we go. You could use um, basilicum gray for this, but you'd need more than one coat. Um, and so what I do is just get my brush wet keep it wet when I dip it in the Black Legion, and then apply it like that. Um, so for the backpack and the gun, this is what I'll do. And then for the other details, I will, first of all, go back to my skinnier brush. But second of all, I will not do this sort of like fake thinning. Because um, those other things I want to be Full on black. Let's get the other side of the gun here. Definitely an argument to be made to paint the gun separate, but again, for the ease of the video and stuff, I just glued it all together. There we go. Anything, all this stuff can be touched up with my smaller brush in a minute, but I think that looks good. Oh, no, we got to get the back side there. All right. Oh, and the front here. So there we go. There's our slightly watered down black. So then we're going to go to our skinny brush again. And we're just going to paint in some details. So first of all, I'm going to do the boots and the gloves in this color. Still using Black Legion, but again, not uh, just with a normal brush, not a wet brush. I'm going to do the other one, and so hopefully you'll see the difference. I'm not sure how much it's going to come across on camera, but hopefully you can see the difference between this color and this color, even though it is in fact the same color. Boot here. There we go. And then we'll get this belt buckle here. We should might leave the gloves how they are currently. I did them black on the other guy, my test model, but uh we might leave them how they are. We'll see. For now I am gonna leave them how they are. So we'll get that. I think that will be it. Yep, that'll be it for this guy. Well, for this color, obviously. So I will let that all completely dry. Uh, actually, this clip is a little bit long, but that's okay. I'm gonna just grab Reichland Flush Shade real quick and just do his face. Just throw it in this step. There we go. Now, I will let this all dry, come back, and we'll do the next step. All right, we are back, and it's time to do the metallics. So, I'm going to use for the gold, Retributor Armor, and for the silver, Plate Mail Metal from Army Painter. I'll start with the silver. I'm just going to get a little bit of this out. If it'll come out of the bottle. There we go. And then we're just going to start in. We're going to start with the uh, start on the gun here. And it's really just about picking out the details that you want to be silver. Um, as usual, I'm not going for any award winning paint job here, just a passable tabletop one. Um, so I'm not super worried about getting every little detail necessarily. I'm just going to pick out some bits of the gun, paint them silver, and call it a day. Oh, a little adjustment knob up there. This, whatever that is there. Get that bit. Um, but, I mean, you could do all sorts of stuff. You could paint the casing silver um you could paint the uh 
the whole scope silver and then do the gun like a color. There's so many things you could do. Um, but for me, I'm just going to be super simple and just paint the detail silver and call it a day. And then I'm going to paint this whole thing silver. And then this silver. Um, and I don't know, actually, if there's points in the Shadow Faults box. I assume there are not, because the guard codex, the new guard codex, is not out yet. Um, but we don't know the points for these guys, but I assume they'll be pretty cheap. Obviously more expensive than guardsmen. So they'll probably be pretty cheap. So, you know, you might have to paint a fair number of them. And so if I have to paint a fair number of these guys, I would like to keep the paint scheme simple. So that's what I plan on doing. That symbol there is going to be gold. Paint the antenna. Right here. That is also going to be gold. Um, he's got some little doohickeys on the side of this like camera here. I'll paint those silver. There's a a, lot, a bar or something there. I'll get these rivets because they're big. Those buttons or whatever they are. Some of the details on these guys are like, what am I actually looking at here? And then it's really just up to you. What do you want to be silver? And what do you want to just leave black? Or green, or whatever. Alright, I think that's it. Um, maybe I'll do a couple of these rivets, just because they're prominent. And there's only a couple of them. There we go. I won't even bother with those, because they're, you know, when the miniature's sitting upright, you probably won't even see them. Oh, but I will get the other side of his helmet here. Alright. So then, like I said, we're going to use Retributor Armor for the gold. There's only a couple things on him that are gold. Uh, the skull on his belt buckle here. The Aquila on his chest. And then his... Uh, I know this, this symbol has a name, but I don't know it off the top of my head. Um... It's the it's the medic symbol for the guard, um, but I don't know what it is. I think it has a cool name in real life too. I mean, it's a little bit of a different symbol, but the same sort of idea. And you know, I said very confidently, this is the medic symbol for the guard. I don't actually know if that's the case. It looks like the symbol that goes on the back of ambulances in real life. So I just kind of assumed, <laughs> but uh, I could be very wrong. This could be something else. If you know what this symbol is, feel free to let me know. Um, but I'm assuming it's the medic symbol. He's reaching. Oh, I forgot to do the grenades. Um, he's reaching in his pouch. So, you know, pull out medical supplies. Obviously, what else would you pull out of a pouch? Uh, absolutely nothing. Agreed. Um, so, but maybe this isn't the medic symbol. I'll be the first to admit, I don't know very much about the guard. I have a guard army, but it uh, consists of only tanks, so... I don't really know what what's going on with the guard. Alright, but now I think that metallic is all done. So, I will let that dry, mostly so I can find the next color. And then we'll come back, do that, and then it's just a couple washes and we're done. All right, we are back, and the last step we're going to do before the uh, shading, the washing, um, is we're going to use some Gorthor Brown, and if you look on the art for these, or on the box art for these guys, um, do we still call it a box art when it's a photo of the miniatures? I'm not sure. In any event, they've got some camo patterns on their, uh, on their armor, so I'm just going to paint a couple of them in. All we're going to do is just kind of draw some basic they have some like kind of weird kind of geometric shapes um and i'm just gonna 
I'm just going to imitate some of them. Not a, I'm not going to go crazy on this because this is probably more level of detail than I would normally do on a on a random infantry guy like this, but uh, I just thought that that detail was kind of key to their look, and so I didn't want to leave it off of the video. But I'm just randomly picking armor panels and then randomly drawing a shape and calling it a day from there. So, and I'm not even that good at drawing shapes, so they're kind of curvy and wonky, and but that's okay. I'm not exactly sure what they're supposed to be. I guess they just are supposed to break up the silhouette like any camouflage. But I'm not sure exactly what they're, uh, what kind of pattern you'd call this. It's not digital. I mean, I guess it is digital, but it's not like the fine detail digital that you'd think of when you see the old U.S. military digital camo. Alright. And... Which is kind of funny, I just realized, like, seeing stuff to break up a silhouette right next to a freaking gold symbol. Probably not the greatest, uh, stealthy idea, but, you know, whatever. The Chaos Space Marines you'll be fighting in the guard are probably able to see you whether you have camouflage or not, so. Rip to you, I guess. Alright, and then maybe a couple little triangles right here. And I think that's good. It gets the point across. That's all that matters. So, I will let this dry completely because we're going to add just a little bit of wash over the top of this. Um, and then once the brown is dry, we'll come back, do that, and call him done. Alrighty, we are back. And we're going to do two quick things. First, we're going to go back to Mortarian Grime here, and we're just going to put this over the armor panels, just to kind of unify the brown and the green a little bit more. Um, just give them a... a... You could do this with... Um, with... My words are hard. With just Lamian Medium or something, um, but doing it with this light brown will also tint the green just a tiny bit towards the more military green uh, which is fine not not really the goal for doing this i'm just trying to unify the finishes of the contrast paint and the layer paint but kind of a little happy side effect there there we go and that's probably not even something you'll notice on camera so i probably could have done it off screen but regardless just so you're all keeping up with all the steps here then we're going to do our classic null oil and we're going to put this on the silver and the black. So just all over the gun here. On these cables. These cables are also a, another uh, good example of something that you could um, put a little more effort into if you wanted. And uh, really make them pop. But works just fine for me how it is. Let me get this... Oh yeah, I'm also going to put this oil on his gloves just to make them stick out a little bit from the rest of his uniform. There we go. On the antenna here. Oh yeah, on his boots. And then just the back of his legs here where these straps are. And then these pouches here. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And I think that will just about do it. <coughs> Got a frog in my throat. But yeah, um, right about now, you should be seeing some pictures of him on a base. I don't know what kind of basing he's going to have, but uh, hopefully by the time you're seeing the pictures, you, I'll have figured it out. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope to have a video of one of the new Necrons up pretty shortly. Not exactly sure what shortly is going to mean, because I am going to a tournament tomorrow. But 
hopefully within five days of this video. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, if you like this video, feel free to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next one.